Welcome back everybody for another episode of Pole Barn Garage where today we're going to be working on the 73 Gran Torino Sport and giving it some major upgrades in the gear ratio department and the intake carburetor and also fixing like the suspension and all that stuff. But in typical car guy fashion, I will begin by making it make more horsepower instead of fixing the things that will kill you. What we got going on here is a little quick fuel 450 CFM 4 barrel and a Y and intake to put on it. Now I went with the 450 in the interest of fuel mileage. I think that combination will probably actually do better than the factory iron intake and the Holly Economaster carb that's on it. And along the same lines, I picked this Petronic setup on eBay. New old stock, pretty cheap. We'll go ahead and replace the points with that. That way we'll be good to go there. Maybe a little more efficient of a spark and you know, let's see how much mileage we can milk out of this thing. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have this quick performance 9 inch gear set here, 325 gears, and an Eaton Positrack true track thing in it. I don't know. Petcock stripped on it, so we'll just take the little radiator hose loose. We don't need to drain at all, just some of it into my mortar tray down there. We just got to get it below the uh, intake level. Right, so under here currently we have a Holly Economaster carburetor and it has little orange slice looking Venturis in there. It's like a 300 CFM or a 275 CFM. Very small carburetor but very good fuel mileage. It's not a bad carb at all. I just think the four barrel might be a little better. First step here is just going to be remove the carburetor of course. All right here we go. Goes without saying, I would think, but I've never really heard anybody mention it. Always disconnect the battery before you go working on something under the hood. You know, you get down on the field terminal, that alternator or something, and boom, sparks, boom, car gone. So shop gone. And we can't lose the shop. I'm gonna set this out here so we don't stink up the joint, but you can see the orange slice or wagon wheel venturis there. It cuts that air up a whole lot. That's supposed to make it more efficient. And I gotta tell you, it works. That's this car. Big old Torino routinely got 18 miles a gallon. I've driven this car 3,000 miles in the three months I've owned it, and it has never gotten worse than 16. We got a bunch of vacuum lines and stuff back here, and uh, everything works in this car, so I'm gonna try very hard to keep all this stuff. But this, however, went to that, which I think is an EGR valve or something like that. That can go away, so no loss there. We'll just pull it off and then plug it on the firewall but we need to keep this vacuum tea, I believe. Look at that. We might have a little vacuum leak. Look at all the soot and crap built up in there. That's from that EGR valve. Never ran like it had a vacuum leak. Ever wonder why I avoid vacuum caps on the channel? This little guy here. I just pulled him right off the intake. You can't even see it, but it's got a hole in the end of it. The thing's been sucking vacuum the whole time I've owned the car. You don't even know it. That's a vacuum leak. Very, very carefully. There we go. Look at that. Keep that all aside, just like factory. What I'm going to do before I remove that distributor out of here, just so we can have it out of our way to pop the intake, I'm going to make a note on the cap of where number one is. And Fords are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Kind of different than a GM or a Chrysler. I'm just going to mark that post so that I know that's number one. You don't necessarily have to have her on top dead center. you got to note where this rotor is pointing. And this rotor is pointing right here on this intake. So I'm going to scratch a mark right here. And then I'm going to take several pictures. And as long as we drop the dizzy in and wire the cap exactly the same, it'll work just fine that will be pointing where it's trying to fire next. Now I finally got that bolt out of there. Ugh. It was seized in there pretty good. Oh, I just dumped all kinds of stuff down in there. I have to give her an oil change now. Okay. Ford always uses a hex head on the base of the shaft to drive the oil pump. And you want to check for end play and side to side play in your distributor because there's bushings in here that wear out. I'm gonna vacuum off the intake and around that distributor hole. I should have done it before, but better late than never. I just want to keep all the crap from falling down in it. God, that's a heavy son of a gun. I didn't know they had a valley pan in them. Probably just replace it with normal gaskets yeah. instead of this big tin thing. 
Oh wow, she's clean. Yeah. Looks really good in there. Yeah. I'll clean it up with this carbide scraper that Kevin from Junkyard Digs showed me. And uh, these work really nice. You can get these at O'Reilly for like you know, 15 bucks. And it's like a razor blade that doesn't break all the time, and it works better at that. Super Clean has sent me like a lifetime supply of this stuff, and I'm totally cool with that because I love Super Clean. It's probably one of the best cleaning products that you can get for pretty cheap. We've got a little problem on the new intake. There's no provision for the dowels, and it has little dowels in the heads to position the shim gasket here. What we're gonna have to do is, I'm guessing, is pull the dowels out of the heads. The old intake right here has a cutout for it, and the new intake has nothing. This is the dowel I'm talking about. They should just be pressed in, I would imagine, but they sure don't want to come out of there. I couldn't get those dowels out, so I cut them off with the cutoff wheel. Now I'm gonna take a Dremel and try to burmish them flat. There you go. Can't even tell it was there. It's not a big deal because this isn't even where the intake seals, but it was holding the intake up. So we just need them to be as flat as possible. Just test fit the intake. And it seems like it fits pretty good. I'm going to put a couple of bolts in it just to make sure. So we're going to pull it back off. We're going to build our china walls, put the gaskets on. I'm going to glue the gaskets on since we don't have alignment dowels anymore. Uh -huh. I was going to block off the heat risers, but they don't fit because probably try to. Well, the gasket also doesn't go really fit. I mean, I don't think those bolt holes are going to work. I don't think they are either. I think I need to open those holes up. Janet Dean sent me these scissors here so we can use these to open these up. I appreciate you guys sending me these. Apparently, Dean seen uh, me struggling with something and he said, wait, them, he's, they's some scissors right here. So he's mailed me some scissors. They're pretty damn good scissors. Get us a nice beefy china wall on here. Made out of right stuff. So the next guy, who's probably me, has to take a torch and an eight foot long pry bar to get the intake off. Now for the flop. I'm gonna truth. And done. We have an intake. Here's a little baby 450 we're using. Every holly carb generally comes with a Ford kick down lever kit. I think you got You put this little bracket right here, and then you disconnect this. This was screwed on, and then you put a spring from there to that bracket. I think. I think that's it. I think that's how you do it. I guess we'll find out. I could be stupid, but I don't think you need this spring. You mat it. Moves the rod, it's adjustable, and the rod springs back fine on its own, so I'm going to try sending it, because if you use the spring, it gets caught on the throttle blade, or the throttle lever here. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to figure this one out. So here's your distributor, there's your Petronics. I'll just sit here at my zero gravity workbench and swap this in. And uh, I thought that you had to disassemble the distributor to do this, but I, I, that may be a GM thing. Looks like on the Ford you just plop it right in. Well, turns out I'm stupid and accidentally ordered a Petronics for a dual point distributor because I'm stupid. So, uh, hmm. Yeah, we gotta throw plugs in it, wires on it, and, uh, and then still do the gear set that I'm sitting on, so we'll do that. Well, since I'm waiting on another Petronic system, because I'm stupid, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some plugs in it. I don't even know if it needs them, but while I'm here, I might as well. And I just got some NGK V powers. No such thing as a good spark plug anymore. I hate to break it to you. Your AC Delcos, your Motocrafts, they're all crap. All right, NGK is a pretty decent plug yet. If you can't get made in the USA, made in Japan's better than China. Just pulled one plug out of it. And it looks beautiful. Nice and brown. Always be looking at the Holly Clarence because you can get good stuff. Like this set of Mallory Sidewinder wires for $17. Let's go to their website and browse their Clarence section. I hate that they're red, but they were cheap. That's an interesting looking plug. I think I found the bad valve guide. Oh well. Looks like a spaghetti mess, I know, but she's got a whole new set of plugs in her. 
Nothing looked really bad except for that one. So those wires are all routed to length. It should just plug right in once we get our distributor done in a couple of days here. You can see the idle arm's got a lot of play in it. It's moving a lot more than it should. And uh, frankly, the car is a little sloppy to drive. So I got a new center link and a new idle arm. I don't think it really needs anything else. And I don't even know for sure that it needs an idle arm, but it does look a little off-centered. This is actually just a bushing in here. You can replace that, but... I scored a whole new idler arm, a new old stock, made in the USA unit for cheap on eBay, and so we'll swap that guy on there, and a new center link. So let's get the pickle fork. See that? That's death. Look how bad that idler arm moves. The center link's actually fine. I have it, so I'll replace it, but that idler arm is foobard. You can tell it's not the tie rod. See the tie rod here? Mm -hmm. See how I move this? and the wheel immediately moves with it. Mm -hmm. There's no slop in either tie rod. But see how much it's turning that wheel? This, yeah. imagine the car riding down the road with that bouncing like that. That wheel's doing this the whole time. Knock this Pittman arm off. <laughs> Kinda did this ass backwards. But... So let's get our new one out. And let's make sure they're the same thing. Look how much heavier that is. Like twice the size yeah. as the original. Hopefully it's the same thing. Auto Drive from 1995. Why'd I buy it? Because it was $12 on eBay. And it's made in the USA. So it's less likely to be constructed entirely out of beer cans. Alright, I got this loosely assembled. More or less, it appears to look like what it's supposed to look like. So I'm going to bolt the idle arm up. And then use that to help me locate everything else. We're all in here. Everything's in. Looks kosher. It's all loose, but we'll tighten it up, of course, and grease everything. But uh, I think this should really help us out a little bit with our drive abilities. So I'm just going to ignore all the collateral damage I caused and tighten everything up. Call it good. And worry about it when it breaks. So I've been wondering what this is. And it's brake fluid. Uh, and it's just yeeting itself out of the master cylinder. I leave for 11 days, and of course it would die. Looks like we get to do one of those too, and then re-bleed the entire brake system. Just gonna have JD tighten down the idle arm, and we'll be done. Rest in peace, hand. Fire at will on the top one, right? Uh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Push. All right, that's beautiful. All right, fire. Look. Beautiful. Look how tighter the front end of this thing is. Oh, God. And it's not even greased. So we have this swarm of killer gnats in here. Probably, I don't know if the camera could pick them up. But they're everywhere. There's thousands, maybe millions. I'm not sure. Thankfully, my new Quick Performance third member came with this protective shield to wear. Oh, my God. It came in a bucket. Ah. Ah. That is a bucket. Guys, what the... Anyway, that is a Yukon Carrier with a 323 gear set. I don't remember what it is. I think it's an Eaton True Track in it. I went with a 28 spline axle because that 400 will never hurt this. It would never hurt a stock one, much less a slightly upgraded one like this. Relatively affordable, if you can believe it. Go on their website, play around with like the build your own rear end, your third member thing there. It's pretty good. I was actually really shocked at how affordable it was to get a quick performance third member in your car. I would have thought they were, you know, mega bucks. And they can be, but they don't have to be. Well, I'm back out here again today. And I decided to take a different route on the distributor. I decided uh, to order a new Petronix distributor for it. I've had good luck with them in the past. So we'll be a couple days waiting on that. In the meantime, we can go ahead and throw our new third member in the car. And then I can figure out that I gave them the wrong measurements. And that I need a new drive shaft. So let's have fun. So on a 9 inch, you gotta pull the axles out. You don't gotta pull them all the way out, but at least a few inches. Disengage them from the, you know, stuff that's inside of there. Those are pro terms. Unbolted. I knew I couldn't get that lucky. Alright, so the drum is hurt. Oh. 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 No. No. God, it's so wet out here. Oh. 
Well, anyway, put the drum on backwards like this if your axles are a little stuck. And they do make axle pullers and stuff like that, but we're not rich, so put a few lug nuts on here. And that's how you do that. Shade tree hack for you right there. Don't save, save your money on the axle pullers and fancy doodads. And, uh, you know, just use elbow grease instead. Ah, that one was easy. Probably could have got that one with my hands, but sometimes they're stuck, sometimes they come right out. This car is 100,000 miles or so now. Well, now it's 104,000 miles. Not too much wear in here, but still good to know those little tricks all these cars had nine inches but one way to tell if you have a nine inch or not is this bottom nut here you can't get a socket on so yeah it's fat mm -hmm. that's how you tell an eight inch you can get it with a socket a nine inch you gotta use a wrench we gotta yank the uh, drive shaft here and then we'll start pulling the third member ah! there we go we've been in there a minute or two. Oh, that u-joint feels horrible oh that's good oh that that's good I should change that while I'm in here. Yes. I won't, but I should. You should grease it. It, it doesn't have a greaser. Oh. oh. It's a freaking non-greasable U-joint. Can you put grease in it? Yeah, I could put a little bit in the cap. We start ripping up nuts. Yeah, 275 gear, 9 inch. Oh. So we're going from a 275 to a 325. And I know all the old guys out there be like, oh, you need 411s. No, you don't. I drive the car every day. It's not a race car. So 325 is a nice little compromise between, you know, acceleration and fuel economy. Out of here. Goodbye. Thank you. Nothing like using 3 8 chrome hardware on your half-inch impact. Safety first. When you're working on a car, always try to find the most comfortable position to do anything. You know, so the drive shaft makes a wonderful pillow. And uh, you just kind of reach your hand up here in your Hawaiian shirt and like, yeah, <laughs> I'm actually too cool to be doing this, but, you know, here I am doing it anyway because I'm so humble. I believe all the bolts are out. So what I'm going to try to do and then fail at is just open her up a bit and then deposit it into this chicken feed bowl thing. Usually pretty tight. Especially when they've been on there for 50 years. Goo. Bring me the goo. The goo. Disgusting goo. Ugh. Ugh. I hate it. it. Smells so bad. Ugh. Come on, you son of a bitch. Yeah, the thing is, it's held on with studs. Mm -hmm. So you gotta... It has to come off straight. There we go. Had to find the spot. Yes. I now, the beauty of it is you can actually inspect your fluid pretty easily. Yeah. Look right through it, and it looks really nice. Yeah. I think I know what's going to happen here. It's stuck, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to get unstuck. Then really it's going to fall in this. And then I'm going to get covered mm -hmm. in this. That's some foreshadowing for you right there, folks. We'll see if it comes true. We're going to take a short break while we wait for that thing to dribble the rest of the way out. I'm really happy that Brunt sent me some of these work shoes here. They got a composite toe. And they're, they're so comfortable to wear in the shop. I'm not getting paid to say this either, but I just kind of want to test them real quick. I am stronger than the van. Anyway, I don't know, that's all I have. There we go. It's like it's been on there for 50 years or something. Comparison. I think I got the right stuff. Looks like the same U joint. Yeah, I think I, I think I did it right for once. You should just go right in. This weighs about twice as much. Oh. Look how much thicker the gear is. I know. We're gonna clean up the rear end there. Get all the gaskets scraped off of it. Then we're just gonna silicone it back up into place to make it a nightmare for me later. So JD was wondering how a rear end works. You see that little guy down in there? See that gear? Uh, yeah. That is the pinion gear, and he's a worm. It's called a worm gear. It's, it's kind of like a worm, like to somebody. This is your ring gear. So that's a worm gear, and it's splined onto the ring gear. So it turns this motion into this motion. Inside here are spider gears. See yeah. how I have this side held solid? Mm -hmm. 
yet it still allows the other side to rotate. Mm -hmm. See that? Those are called spider or planetary gears because they rotate around one another like planets. They orbit. Mm -hmm. If I hold one still, it spins the one that has no resistance on it, which is why they suck. Because <laughs> whenever you light the tires off on something and it takes off spinning, where's it going to keep putting the power? To the one that's spinning. Or if you're driving around in the snow, right? Say you got one tire on ice and one tire's on dry pavement, it's only going to spin the one that's on the ice. I don't have any brake clean, but what I do have is super clean! Ah! That did your eyes. <laughs> It's so good. My eyes are so clean now. Wow. Wow, I can see smells. Official cleaning product of Pull Barn Garage. Well, not really, but I do like them a lot, and they're great, and they sent me more this time. I don't, now, guys, super clean. I'm still waiting on the 55-gallon drum. I got my big cult gun full of RTV here. Oh, boy. Maybe I ought to put it on the jack. All right, I had to pull JD off the camera to help me with this. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him. This freaking thing is a fat son of a gun. Now all we gotta do is put the nuts on it. That's all there is to it, actually. It's not as dramatic as they make it look like on motor trend. Put these back in, you walk them on like you're tightening a wheel or a carburetor. Just bounce side to side, side to side. What are you doing, JD? I'm putting the axles in. Oh, good, good luck. Slide her up in there. You see the bearing race on the end? Uh, yeah. All right, you gotta get that up in there. So twist the axle and push. Oh, yep, let me show you how it's done. That's it. What? How did you even do that? Cause I know my way around automobiles. Boom. It's going forward? Yes, it's going forward. That's a posse. We got a posse now. I mean, it's not a posse. It's a true track, but whatever, it's a posse. If you run around saying, well, I have a limited slip in my car, everyone's gonna be like, what are you talking about? But if you run around saying, I got a pause track, everybody knows what you're talking about then. So that's like one terminology thing. I give, I give them a pass. She got a posse. You, you can say that. You'll note how I checked out the axle seals and replaced them, you know, mm -hmm. and the bearings. You just did. Yep. And Off yep. camera. They're good. Yeah, they're no. I, I just did it right now. X-ray. Yeah, they're fine. All right, so we got to fill this baby up. This is a tag for it. 8090, no posi additive for this one. Well, let me grease this U-joint. This is going to fix it. Look at that. It will. That's first time. Shoot, that never happens when I'm involved with something. I always order the wrong thing. Begin pump action. Squirsh, squirsh. Oh, yeah. How much does it hold? I have no idea. You fill it up till it comes out of the hole. Slurp, slurp, slurp. I believe it's starting to puke. Has my cup runneth over? Has my diff runneth over? Yes, it has. There it is. There's, it's puking! Ah! Ah! All right, she's full. Rotates. The wheels both move the same direction. So I think we're good to go here. We'll throw the wheels back on, put her back on the ground. So this thing needs a blower motor and that's not why the vents have quit working that's the uh, vent controls over there some switch in there is not working right but it's needed the blower motor since day one and i figured it'd be easy enough to knock out maybe it's under the dash and up in here somewhere I think if I pull the glove box out, I can probably access it. I think most of these cars, the glove box is made out of cardboard. Yep. I mean, there's a blower motor in there somewhere. Might as well get comfy. Ugh. It's actually pretty comfy down here. Mm. Feels good on my back. This is one of them inverted back relaxers. You didn't, did you ever know that your Torino did this? I'm decompressing my spine into my head as we speak is that good no i could probably go to bed under here dude this thing's so full of mouse poop aha uh -huh. it's not bad you just gotta know where the screws are which i don't and still don't. just fly blind and guess that's my motto every time i turn this thing on you can ask kevin about this go check out junkyard digs it sounds like a death whale of a banshee just like <coughs> phew not as much as i was hoping to find that's not all the stink. Aha! Hello, Fivel. That is a skull. There's a freaking skull in it. 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Poor Fivel. Well, I had bought a new uh, wheel for it, and you could tell that that's an exact replacement. Thanks, Internet. So, I guess we have to get this thing off. And it has a set screw in the side. I think we can all guess how well this is going to work. I, I think it's worth giving it our due diligence here anyway. Holy crap, it worked. There she goes. Come on. Come on. It smells like burning rat shit. Huh. There's probably nothing wrong with this. It's probably just full of skulls, and that's why it made noise. But at least they're cremated now. I guess no. Stop! It likes, uh... It's gonna set off the smoke detector. In this place. <laughs> Stop! Oh! What is on fire in there? Anyway. Let's do it again. Well, I bought a new one, because that's not coming off of there. How and, dare you? I mean, we set it on fire and everything, so... I don't know what else to do. Well, yeah, back out here another day, and I'm gonna bench bleed a master cylinder and throw it on the old Torino here. I'm gonna try to just swap it on there without bleeding the brakes. Sometimes, if you're quick about it, you know, if you're good, you can get away with that. So that's never gonna work. First one I've had in a while that actually bench bled properly. No bubbles. I'm about to be real careful, like, I got a line here that's stuck on the fitting, and I've tried to clean it up and get it broke free, or we'll be in bad shape. Apply a little of this. Sometimes a little heat, and then a little bit of PB makes a big difference. It draws that PB in there, then also sets your car on fire, and, well, then it's not really a problem anymore, is it? Well, we work them back and forth. Don't rush it now. We just save that brake line, or dramatically weakened it forever. One or the other, we did something. Jeez. Oh, you want to lose as little fluid as possible and try to do a quick change. Sometimes we got a little air bubble up here, it'll pop back out the top instead of going down the line, if you're lucky. Oh yeah, that thing's wasted. Clean that up a little super clean in there. Slip you on. All right, what do we got for pedal? To the floor? Oh no. Feels fine. And no leaks. I think we're good to go. And uh, pedal feels fine. No question, I'm gonna have to go back and revisit this, but for now I'll say it's fine. One more thing I'm gonna try to tackle while I'm waiting on a distributor is the AC controls. And they were working just fine, but then I noticed I couldn't get the blower motor to turn on unless it was all the way to the right on defrost. Now, do I have any idea how this works? Absolutely not. Look at this big scary octopus. It's terrifying. But here's the deal. If you possess average intelligence and a little common sense, you could probably figure this out. Maybe you won't. That's okay. You gotta try to figure it out. Don't be scared of it. Just because it looks like a big scary old octopus in there. Well, it probably is a big scary old octopus, but damn it, you need air conditioning and you need to get to work next week. So what do you do? You fix it. Or try to and fail and then just have a beer about it instead. So all I've got to go on here is an assumption, all right? Because if I move this little guy here is the temperature lever. This little rod here is gonna go to some sort of control valve inside of the heater core, which is gonna regulate your temperature. And then this little, little mini octopus here is probably the blend doors, I'm gonna guess, or maybe recirc, something like that. That's not our problem. We can leave him alone. Now, this guy up here. Now see this little coil thing on the top of this. When I move the vents, 
he should be making contact with something. I'm gonna guess this little contact thingy, he's probably got power on him. Let's take a look. There we got power coming in on the red. Oh, that's air conditioning. That's the AC clutch. I'm just trying to troubleshoot, guys. This is how you do it. You know, ain't nothing gonna get done for you. Here's a problem. See that little tang in there? It's bent. And the little, like, aluminum-looking tang next to it? Those are supposed to touch when you engage the HVAC. Bend that copper one a little bit, and it'll work again. It just got bent. The uh, blower motor itself, over there, it has power right now. And it is working, it's just I wasn't getting the AC compressor, I guess. I don't know. I was incorrect in my initial assumption. These, these two contacts aren't meant to go together, but this copper one's meant to pop onto a little contact bar, like a piece of breadboard, inside of there. So I bent that little contact up, and I think it'll work now. And, let's see. Let's... On, off, on, off, on, off. I think we got it, boy. Now the AC compressor should stay engaged, and I should have a frosty drive to work. We're all buttoned back up, and not without a little bit of hardship, but we did it. You hear the AC compressor come on? We'll be rocking and rolling. Everything still works. Now it'll just be a, a matter of whether or not the blower motor actually works. Good chance that the resistor burned up because of all the crap that was in it. But we did have power over there, so I'm willing to go with that for now. I guess it's worth mentioning that uh, the reason I'm doing this is I charged the AC in the car off camera. Changed all the O-rings and the dryer, and it worked. So, uh, but then I'm driving home from work, it's hot, and it, I have the AC on, it's beautiful, and 30 minutes later, pfft, nothing. That was why. Well, along last year, our Petronics distributor, Billet Flamethrower Igniter 2 has shown up. You know, these are uh, something I really like. They're, they're like a GM style distributor. What we need to do now is get her on top dead center, which I already did. Then we'll stab this guy in. And uh, then we'll rewire the new distributor cap, which is a GM style cap. It's a little bit taller. Hopefully it doesn't cause any issues. Now the other thing to note is you can run these off of a resisted wire. Um, you can run them off of points voltage. You shouldn't, but you can. However, I checked voltage on the supply wire for the coil. That should have an inline resistor in it. It has 12 volts with the key on, which explains why it was burning up points. Uh, I don't know why that is, because the resistor wire in this car is actually under the dash by the tack. Somebody's been in there. Figure out, we just need to pick a spot for number one. All right, I got it stabbed in here. It, it's just so much taller than it, it was throwing me off. And it's gonna, it was gonna cause us a few issues here. I didn't take that into account. All right, cap's all wired up. Don't love it, but it is what it is. It's tall, it makes it easy to work on, actually. It's kind of right there in your face. All, all you gotta do to hook one of these up is Red wire goes on the positive terminal of the coil. Black one goes on the negative or discharge side of the coil. Okay, we're all wired up here, and I just want to verify with the key on that we have 12 volts, and we do. Good battery voltage at the coil, but also, I figure one of these guys is probably for the factory electric choke. So with the key on, I should have 12 volts to something. Not that one. For an electric choke to function properly, you gotta have 12 volts with the key on. What is the purpose of these wires that apparently do nothing? How does this have voltage on it at all? Well, I wired the electric choke up to the radio fuse so that, you know, when the Van Halen stops playing, you're gonna have a hard time starting in cold weather. Well, let's see if it'll start. Okay, timing's a little off, but I'm pretty sure the distributor's in right, at least. Uh, let's see here. You spin you this way, I'll spin you this way. I'm gonna shoot for about 14 degrees. This should have 24 
four degrees of advance. 18 is pushing it. That would be 42 degrees of total timing. I don't want to go any more than that, but I also don't believe that's really 18 degrees. It does have 24 degrees of timing in it. So, maybe. But do you believe the 50 year old mark on the balancer? I don't. The only thing to really do, maybe we'll back it off a little bit, go drive it, and see how it performs. So lazy. Gotta idle it down a little bit. go drive it. Car's up to temp right now. I want to shut it off, see if it diesels, and also see if it'll restart. Try to diesel. Starts easy though. Sounds good. Not perfect. I think I need to play with that carb a little. Being a 450, it's probably super rich actually right now. Uh, because it's not pulling enough air. Or maybe it is. I don't know. That'll be a, a time will tell sort of thing. Oh, the pack still works. Yep. Hey, that's cool. Way to go, Patronics. Bring the pack still works. It's a little squishy. Two pumps. She's a two pump chump now. Anyway, let's see uh, see if she's any different driving wise. is still in it. Huh. I can't get a wheel to balance on this thing to save my life. nice and normal. Yeah. We don't got a big old carburetor on there. I mean, we're choking it off pretty bad, actually. But that's okay for what it is. It's just a daily driver. It needs exhaust. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I don't know when that happened. Well, we got a posse now, so uh, can we do fun stuff? Not really. the carburetor holding it back there. I could probably tune it to do a little bit better, but I don't know. I don't know how much I care. Not very much. I can tell you that much. Those are 
big black marks. She didn't do that before, did it? No. Well, that's fun. But I think we all know what a Torito is really good for. We gotta fix that belt. That thing's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a supercharger. Like... <laughs> but this is where the posse really comes into play. Gravel roads. this thing around a little while maybe grab some supper and uh, you know just enjoy the Torino for what it is for now next time you see it I think I'll be doing some seats some headliner repairs and uh, maybe even starting on the bodywork eventually here so make sure you stay tuned for that thanks again for watching Pole Barn Garage and uh, we will see you next time